Welcome to the third Twine tutorial video. In this video I'm going to cover macros and changing the visual appearance of stories using HTML and CSS. Now I'm starting with the pirate story again, but this time I'm showing you something that I've already made so we can start there and I can go back and show you the code that actually runs it because the code's going to be a little complicated. But let's start with this. As you can see, there's a dialog box in the middle of the screen labeled JavaScript. This is Chrome's way of letting you know that JavaScript has enabled something and that you're not to confuse it with a system message or something else. So it says, please enter your name, and I've written Dan here. I'm going to click OK. And now Twine says in the start passage, hi Dan, how are you? Well, that's pretty cool, right? So let's refresh this again to show you something neat. Whatever I type here, will also get displayed. Hi Fred, how are you? Now let's go and look at the Twine code. Right now I've got two passages, start and name prompt. Now let's look at start. It is using display and the name of another passage, name prompt, and then I'm using a macro underneath that called name prompt. Then it says hi, and then we're printing the value of the variable name, how are you? That's pretty basic actually. We're displaying another passage, we're running a macro, and we're printing a value. However, behind the scenes, it's a lot more complicated. So name prompt is doing a lot of different things here. The first of which is it's using the command silently, which means when this is run between silently and end silently, no spacing is to be displayed in Twine. This means that it's going to run and the player or the reader won't actually know what's happening. The other thing that's going on here, I'm setting a variable macro name prompt to the value of a function, starting with the opening brackets and closing here with a closing bracket. And in, within the function, I have macros and then in brackets and then within single quotation marks, name prompt. That's the macro I called in the start passage. Now it's defined to have a handler. The handler is a function. Now that's all pretty complicated, but what it all means is this code right here, starting with defining the value of the variable name to be equal to the response returned by prompt and ending with this if conditional right here. We'll get run when the macro name prompt is called. Now Twine, at least in my opinion, is a little strange about the way it runs JavaScript, which is what this is. Anything that is JavaScript, that is any script actually, that the browser can understand, isn't run in a defined order. This is Twine's way of making sure that it doesn't run passages in any specific order other than that defined by the person who created the story. What that means in practice, though, is that you have to set it, then call print to run the function, which is what these parentheses mean. I'm running this function. And then and the passage you actually want to use it in, you need to display that passage so the code gets run, and then call the macro after it's been defined and then processed by Twine. It's a little complicated, I know. And at least in my opinion, it's probably too complicated. But it allows Twine to make sure that the person who created the story is actually defining how it's run which is good, but it also means trying to do advanced features like doing this code here. It doesn't always work out exactly the way you want it unless you know how Twine is actually running things. Now if you didn't follow all of that code right there, don't worry. I've been posting the examples as I do them as we've been going. So you can have access to the code and you can change it later after I add some more things and I cover changing the visual appearance, which I'm going to do now. Okay. So as we saw when I run this, and I'm, it still says untitled story, and of course it doesn't have a story author. Well, that's very strange, isn't it? Well, coming back to Twine, 
going to Story, New Passage. Open it up. And I'm giving this passage a very specific title called Story Title. And now I'm going to write the title of the story. A Pirate Tale. Story, New Passage. Story author, Dan, close, file, save story, story, rebuild story. Going back to Chrome, refresh. And as you can see, it now says a pirate tale. And the story author is Dan, which is me. And of course it says, hi Dan, how are you? Because that's the name I entered in the dialog box. So let's go back to Twine for a second. Well, that's all well and good too. We can change the story title, we can change the story author. Now, I don't really like black text on a gray background, so let's look at, let's make it a little more exciting here. I'm going to Story, New Passage. I'm going to name this Styles. Now's the first time I've ever used a tag, and it's very specific. Style sheet. This is a listing or a sheet of the styles that this story will be using. Now, I know what they are off the top of my head, but if you're ever curious about what you can actually define, you can go to Twine's documentation, which is all online, and look for changing your story's appearance, and it lists all the CSS selectors. start with body. Body defines everything that's within the page itself. Let me show you what I mean by that. So coming up to style, let's write body, opening bracket. I want to change the font size, so I'm going to type font, size, a colon, and I'm going to change it to 1.2m, close bracket. The M defines the set size of any font at a particular font point. What it means, though, is that whatever size the user has set, or is the default, it gets set to the value of 1M. 1.2M, therefore, is 1.2 times that, or 20% bigger. Let me show you what that looks like. File, Save Story, Story, Rebuild Story. Come down to Chrome, back to our Pirate Tail, refresh. Now everything is 20% bigger. Which is very cool. I prefer to have fonts and font sizes to be bigger than normal. The reason I do this is because to make it easier to read on all screens. Coming back to Twine, an M is a relative sized unit. Each browser, that is program that reads web pages, and any device that has separate browser programs all have default values. But all of their default values are set to 1M. So if you change the value of M, then it's all going to be relative to whatever screen size, device size, or anything in the future. So it will always look the same relative to the device and relative to everything else. So let's make this just slightly bigger. In point four, let's change something else. I want to change the background to be green. I'm going to change font color, which is just used color, to be pink. Save, story, rebuild story, back to Chrome, refresh. The font is pink, and this font is pink. But these fonts are still black. Now the reason they're black 
It's because Twine defaults to its style sheet unless it's overwritten by us, the people who create the stories. And I didn't overwrite it. And as you can see, the passage background, which is what this rectangle is right here, is still white. So we need to change the CSS properties of the passage. So let's look at the documentation on how to do that. So it says dot passage is a single passage on the page. That's what we want to change. Coming to styles dot passage opening bracket close bracket set the background to be green set the color to be pink and let's change the font size as well so it's just slightly bigger than the rest of the font on the page file save story story rebuild story And there we go. We set the background color to be green. And we've also set the passage background color to be green. We sent the font color and both the passage and the body to be pink. So it's pink and it's green. However, up here, it's set to a different color. That's what's stated in here as floater, as it says right there. We can change it if we want, but I'm not particularly worried about it. What I think would be slightly more interesting is if we change the passage title. So let's do that. Passage title is dot passage dot title. Come back to styles. Dot passage dot title. I've now set the passage title to be even slightly bigger than the font that's in the passage, which is bigger than the font that's in the body. So passage titles appear the biggest on the screen. Coming back to the story. Start is bigger than the font Hi, Dan, how are you? Which is bigger than the story was created with. And as you can see, using styles, I can change all kinds of various things. For example, I want to change the font color to white and this font color to stay pink. I can do that. File, save story, story, rebuild story. And I did. This is now white. This is still pink. Between using macros and changing the visual appearance, you can do some very powerful stuff with Twine. Combining that with what I've covered in the other two videos on linking passages and doing choices, you can create nearly anything you'd want within Twine. In the next video, though, I will combine all of these things with some additional JavaScript code to show you a project I've made during that week that I will then post after I've explained it during a video. Thanks for watching.